you know the origin of dork? Uh, infected hair on an elephant's butt, right? Whale penis. That. I thought dork was an infected hair on an elephant's butt. No, that's your mom. Oh my god. <laughs> Back to our stupid Rex with Ethan Corbin. I'm Rick. You follow us on Instagram, Instagram Twitter, 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 Twitter. Thanks on Patreon. Follow us on Twitter. Click out. Follow us on Instagram. Bye. Follow us on Person YouTube channel in the description below. Happy Pride Month, everybody. Yeah. Uh, today we're doing a movie review of the uh, new uh, 2021 film, Perfect Pride Movie. I have no idea. No, that has nothing to do with that <laughs> <not>. at all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> we will try to get to some this month. That we should do this uh, month. I, I'm going to try. Uh, I'm asking the team. You like the... Huh? This is made by Stupid huh? Baby. Um, and today we are doing a Malayalam movie review of the film Kala. I believe it's called Kala. Right? Yes. Kala? Kala. Kala. A uh, psychological thriller that revolves around Saji. Saji. Uh, who faces an intriguing conflict with the many layered shades of human behavior. Ooh. That, that's a... It's very cryptic. Very, very cryptic. I like that better, though, than, than giving it away. Always. Uh, and, I don't know if you could give this film away, honestly. But no. uh, the directed by Rohith V.S. I, I think agree. That's how you pronounce that. Correct. Uh, I want to give shout-outs to the cinematographer. His name is... Say it, please. Uh, Kiel George. And editor... And the editor, uh, Charmin Chaco. Yeah. Forgive me if those were mispronounced. Composer is Don Vincent. That's what it looks like. Wow, that's... A... Yeah. Don Vincent. Is he white? Or is he just Christian? No. Um, anyways. Uh, starring Tovino Thomas. And then uh, I guess, Sumesh Moore. I guess. Uh, Lal, Lal and Divya. Divya Palai. Yeah. And uh, Pramod Vilayanad. Yeah. Again, forgive me for... Sorry about that. Uh, but it's a uh, Malayalam film. Malayalam has just keep putting out new films. <laughs> no, <it's laughs> like They're like the only industry that's just like... Keeps COVID, <laughs> what?! <laughs> Keeps putting out <laughs> content. I mean, more power to them, man. Um, but uh, so if you haven't watched it, go watch. I believe was it on Netflix or Amazon. Amazon. It was on Amazon. Yeah. Go if you're an Amazon it. Prime member in the states, it comes with your subscription. Yeah. What does that work like in India, though? Do you know? No idea. Okay. I know yeah. If I don't know. Andrani, if she has yeah. Prime or not. But Rick, your initial thoughts, please. Um, and we'll do our best and let you know and have a front half without spoilers. Oh yeah. And yeah. Second yeah, sure. half because this is a new release. Yes. Many of you haven't seen it. We'll um, let you know if we get to spoilers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's, it's from cinematically, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a fricking like, I don't know what the word is, uh, that I'm looking for. I may have written it down in my, my phone. Jolly it's Taku a, level? Yeah, even, even more <laughs> than that. I think I put down that it's a, in fact, let me get it. Hold, hold up. Cinematography. I put down, it was one of the first thing I said, because it was noticeable right from the very beginning. Um, it is a... Hold it. There it is. Um, you put it in your emails? Uh, yeah, it's because that way I don't have to deal with my oh, yeah, Wi-Fi right. Right. situation right now. Uh, a master class. Oh, yeah. I knew it. I said it seven minutes in. I said, this thing's going to be a master class in cinematography. Well, cinematography and editing. Yeah, both. Yeah. Cinematography and editing. <laughs> However, for me, it became all about style and very little substance for me. Mm. Um, and if I missed some things, because I know that this is very rooted in... Kerala and the history of people there in the land mm -hmm. and I'm sure there's some things that I may have missed in that regard but I don't know how easily I might have obtained them because it was so difficult for me as it went on mm -hmm. to disassociate myself from the fact that I didn't care about what was going on or who was doing it mm -hmm. I it was fun watching the visuals but there were yeah. so many other things that strained credulity for me and I didn't see any allegorical or metaphorical connectivity to mm -hmm. it that for me ultimately it was like if you want to watch Cinematography and editing that'll keep you spellbound and you'll be astonished even though this guy really likes Mel Gibson, I think. <laughs> um, uh, uh, then you're in for a treat if you want to watch that. As far as story connectivity with people and caring about them and mm. even something metaphorical for me, I, it got lost for me. It gotcha. was just style. Overall, yeah, I, I, I did actually, I was actually engrossed be, probably because of a lot of the visual stuff, man. It was... That's, it's it was, a, that's unbelievable. And I was, I was intrigued as, as to what the story was. And I do agree, it's, it's, it's definitely a mixed bag for me. Although, I did enjoy the film uh, in terms of 
like it was just it was very enjoyable to watch i mean what he put on screen and how they edited the the, the score as well yeah it was like extremely the, unique the music goes very um, well with the visuals and you get. uh and so i i like it a lot to jolly taku a lot of the story is about the message and it took me a minute to figure it out um but uh I think I, I think I figured out. Well, I, I'm sure there's a bunch I missed, but the, I think the overall message, uh, or the, the the I don't know if the message is the right word. Um, story. The, I, I don't know if the story is the right word because it's actually a very simple story. Uh, it's oh, just yeah. I think the, the I like it at Taco One with the visuals and the prominence of the thing is about the message, I, for lack of a better word, of the film. Mm -hmm. uh, I did actually, in terms of the beginning, enjoy the relationship between the husband and the wife. Very, very early, the first like 20 yeah, minutes. Yeah, the first 20 minutes yeah, yeah, yeah. when they're I'm, showing their relationship a lot. I was, I was anticipating based on that. I even put in my notes, yeah, show me dead. I thought something yeah. was gonna happen to the wife or the son and yeah. we would watch vengeance take place yeah. because they got me to care yeah. for the husband and the wife and the son. Yeah. But then quickly, well, I guess we're going into spoilers now. Yeah, if you haven't so watched it, you haven't no, watched it, if, if, watch it. I think you'll probably enjoy some parts of it. You can probably have problems with other parts of it. Mm -hmm. But I, I think, I don't know if you, I think you'll overall enjoy it, even though there are stuff that I yeah. that, that I would probably do differently myself. I think it's a crapshoot. Yeah. I think there's some of you that will watch it and walk away from it liking it, hate and it some and of you will be like it. with yeah. me going like, yeah, no, I didn't like it very much. Yeah, and I, I don't mind that because I think it, it leaves it up to the audience. This definitely left a lot of questions up to the audience audience of answering certain things and I don't know if it answered every single question that it even presented uh, at all but we'll get into that as we get into the spoilers I just don't it's hard to discuss the rest of it yeah we got to go into the spoilers discussing. now so, so spoiler time yeah I think the um, one obviously I love the overall style of the film it was very stylized very very it's stylized. all style yes yeah. yeah. um, about obviously in terms of one I thought the fight choreography was wonderful um, mm. no no. He, he doesn't agree. I don't uh, agree. But <laughs> I thought the fight choreography was great. I loved the editing, loved the cinematography, Agreed. loved the score. Agreed. Uh, overall, and I, I liked the VFX as like, well. I thought the VFX did very the, the blood and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, they did very good with the visual yeah, effects. Yeah. In fact, the cinematography, I was like, oh, this is a candidate for like yeah. some of the best of the year. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Um, it took me a minute at the end, because we'll get into that right now, and then we'll get into the rest, because I don't I feel like you can't discuss the rest of it without discussing kind of the overall message. The overall the message. Um, and I don't know if you have a theory or if you just were like, I don't know what the f that was. Well, I think part of it, if not all of it, mm. is deeply rooted in the, 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 the whole thing in Kerala with the two people groups, who got the land, who it belonged to before, and the, the for caste slash classism. Yeah that has gone on there, yeah. particularly at the end when he says to him, now you know what it feels like. Yeah. And the whole symbolism of the dogs and the hogs. Yeah. And I, I think ultimately my take on it is gonna be minimized and maybe even my appreciation mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm not as aware of mm -hmm. the situation. Yeah, I kind of took it almost as, as the, the, I forget the uh, younger actor's name, the guy who was all animalistic. Yeah, the animalistic, um, yeah, demonized yeah, yeah. kind of character. I thought he did a great character. job, honestly. I liked him a lot. Um, it, very stylized. Very, very stylized. Yeah, ultra stylized. Um, uh, which, I, see, I like when films do stuff that I, I don't expect. And so, like, I give a lot of grace to films that, that kind of go out of the box. And this film was oftentimes very out of the box with what it, what it was trying to do. But the overall message, he was the lower cast. In terms of, I don't even think it was just in Kerala specifically, I think it's just all of India in terms of just their whole, um, as long as caste has been around. Mm -hmm. He was uh, lower caste and this guy was not really up, up caste, but I no, think- No, at least he, above he, him. Above this gentleman. And so right. they kind of represented the two. And so there was a lot of stuff about that and how, how he sees him almost, I think that's why he was very animalistic because the upper caste sees the lower caste sure. sees animals this time. and. This director loved nature and animals. <laughs> like that was that questions I had. I was like, okay, why are we focusing so much on? And I think it was because of the just we're all kind of like Jolly Talk did a little bit. Yeah, I think there's a lot of parallels that yeah. you could you could liken it to that in the same regard. Particularly the fact of the animalistic side and the fact that there's the representation of the animals. And I think it's not coincidental that so much of this was taking place on the ground oh, yeah. in the land because yeah. that's the central point about the fact that. 
part of the separation is the fact that some people yeah. got this land and took it from the people that originally had it. Yeah. Yeah. And so obviously there's a lot of that. Obviously the, the beginning quote, I believe it was Oscar Wilde. Oscar right? Wilde. Um, about Great selfishness quote. and um, uh, what was the direct, exact quote? Do you remember? Yeah, the, direct, the quote is, I'll get it something along the lines of selfishness isn't, ah, I can tell you exactly what it is. Um, Cause I, I wrote it down. I actually sent it to my friend who I was talking to and it, it hit at a very providential moment for me to send it to him. Mm -hmm. uh, we had just finished a conversation and I started the movie and then I sent him the quote and it says, selfishness is not living as one wishes to live. It's asking others to live as one wishes to live. Yeah. yeah. And so there was a lot of stuff in it uh, about, you know, you know, how, how he, he beat him up uh, and, and stuff like that. And then he went to the well and he was like, I was going to try to save you mm -hmm. after he had already put him in the well to die. And so he's like, I came back to save you and you're still being a dick. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> missing the point. Yeah. Missing the point. <laughs> You put me in the well. Yeah, and you killed my dog right. uh, as well, purposely. Uh, and so there, there was no, there was no, um, I think, defining good character in this uh, on purpose. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the um, the he made the the guy who was the who was supposed to be the lower cast extremely animalistic at time. Mm -hmm. um, and and then they just it, there was so much fighting going on. And it was excruciating that sometimes like, oh, we're still fighting. And obviously, I think that was, once again, it's the point part of the message. Be, part of the message is they've always been doing this. Right. And they probably will be for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. And the, at the end, when I thought, I was like, so what's going to happen? Is he going to kill him? Is he going to what? Right. And then he was like, are you done? Mm -hmm. Okay, you know how it feels now, right? Mm -hmm. And then he took his... And so you, there's a bunch of questions at the end that you kind of, the director was like, you... You figure out what you think this means. Yeah. And, and and there's stuff at the beginning that I don't know that I would have done. He made it very tense in the beginning. And I was like, okay, why is this tense? I thought it was going a different direction at certain times. Yes. And so there's some, like, some stuff that I probably would have done differently or either I missed why it was in there. And so, I, like I said, I don't think it was a perfect film by any, any stretch. But overall, I think I enjoyed it. Especially the filmmaking aspect of it, similar to Jolly Taku. Obviously, when we, right when we rocked out of Jolly Taku, not walked out, when we watched it, remember, yeah. we're like, I didn't care about anybody, but man, that was, yeah, that because, was nice. <laughs> because, because that was definitively yeah. the kind of film where it is just the director's medium yeah. moving everything the way he wants it to be seen because he has an overall story and message he's going to convey yeah. that... Yeah. that pretty much the whole movie becomes an analogy. And I felt that that comparatively was a higher level kind of cinematic intelligence. Mm. And, I, and I just mean that from the sense of example. Some of the things where that worked and this didn't for me was there was like at the beginning of the film, I was looking at the time frame. I'm like, okay, we're 40 minutes in and you've maintained this level of tension as if we're waiting for either a ghost or a bad guy or some other proverbial shoe to drop. And it's not dropping. Yeah, I think the dad said, I felt somebody on my back one time. Yes. And, and then I was like, is the wife a witch? No, <laughs> For a second, I was like... Yeah, and I think, I think probably the message in that regard was that this is something that permeates more than just yeah. the land. This is something that permeates the very invisible realm here. Yeah. This is a spiritual as well as a physical battle yeah. that's taking place here. However... I found that the stylization was so strongly overshadowing everything that even to the point, for example, there were moments where smoke was coming out of his mouth, you know, with blood and smoke. And there was a point where he turned and he had drool coming out of his mouth and he's kind of shaking with the drool coming out of his mouth. Rather than it be something that was either deeply real and believable and scary or ultra stylized to the point of me getting a message and what the visualization was, mm it felt more like, isn't this something really cool that we're doing with this visual stylization? Mm. And I got pulled from caring about anybody because gotcha. of it and actually thinking comparatively, like to Jolly Katu, the, 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 the symbolism and the metaphor and the allegory and the overall message for me became style was more important than actual conveyance of the story. And, and, and the other thing that bothered me were moments like you see him snap his ankle, mm -hmm. but then he's walking like he sprained it. Yeah. So for the rest of the time, I'm like, I know that 
was supposed to have been snapped and now the rest of the time he's watching, yeah. which pulls me out of the believability of what I'm watching. Yeah, I noticed that as well. And I, I don't know if they meant it to be like, he kind of just popped it out of place because then, then he got it caught in something and I don't know if it kind of pulled, he pulled it back into place. And I think that's what they were trying to convey, but I did notice that as well. Absolutely. Uh, but, and then also, I kind of attribute this almost to like John Wick a little bit, like a little bit of like, uh, how the oak oh, one, the dog thing, obviously. <laughs> the dog thing. The dog. Anytime it's a dog thing, it's going to go back to John And then Wick. obviously there's just a bunch of bunch of fighting. That, that's only a little, like, no, it was so. like, jo no, John Lee Taku, like, um, um, a little bit of John Wick revenge. They just keep fighting until something happens. And then a family ish drama kind of and obviously something with a big message uh overall but yeah there, there was definitely issues like that that i probably would have either just not done anything with the leg like broke a finger or something probably still got the same message or at least maintained it with a green screen over the ankle so that his leg is snapped the whole time and everywhere you watch him walk it's flopping around like a broken ankle does <laughs> i would have loved that and for those of you who might not pick up on my mel gibson reference um, not only was so much of it very similar to some of the visualizations that Gibson does in Apocalypto, but uh, very oh. reminiscent of Apocalypto. Oh, yeah. Uh, blood on leaves yeah, and yeah, the yeah. fighting and uh, things of that nature, but two straight up, more than tips of the hat, almost like, yeah, I'm borrowing that and hopefully nobody will notice from Hacksaw Ridge and Passion of the Christ. So the Hacksaw Ridge moment is... After the fighting sequence, he takes the bucket of water and under the sunshine, he pours the water on himself and you see all the blood and water washing off of his dirty body in slow-mo. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what happens in Hacksaw. After he's been up on the ridge, he comes down and he pulls the thing and under sunlight, pretty much exact angle and slow-mo pan. Mm. And then there's obviously the teardrop. Did you notice that? Gotcha. The teardrop. They're on the ground and from the lens, in this film, it's a raindrop. Oh yeah. No, no, and no, no, no. you see the water come up and in and blur and drop and fall straight down. Mm -hmm. The first time and only time and one of the biggest moments in The Passion of the Christ is that moment. At the moment of Jesus' death, mm. from the perspective of Father God, the raindrop comes down as if it was a tear from God yeah. onto the ground. And gotcha. when I saw that, I was like, okay, yeah, it was straight out of The Passion of the Christ. <laughs> um, but, oh, and we didn't talk about them. I The, the main actor I thought did well. Uh, I, the, to, to, say his name? Tavino Thomas. I enjoyed him. Obviously, it was stylized, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't mind that very much. Uh, if, if you straight up from the beginning tell me it's going to be stylized, then I, I can get on board. Unless board. it's Dev Doss. That's not stylized. That's just bad acting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed that. Like I said, it, their, their relationship I thought did really, really well in the first, what was it, 20, 30 minutes? 20 minutes, minutes yeah. Of the film. I actually was like invested in them. I was. I was hoping in that. And the trailer actually led me to kind of feel as if this was an ensemble family thing and that they themselves were being oppressed and you would care about the family. Yeah. So it, yeah. it, it, it yeah. definitely took it a different direction. Yeah. I think there's, it, I think there's stuff that you can love and, and, and not like about the film. And it, it might be the director's the intention when a lot of times when you make films like this, you, you know, a lot of people probably aren't going to love everything you do, especially when it's an experimental film. Yeah. And as long as the director, when it's all said and done, is happy with the outcome of it yeah. and irrespective of what people are saying, it's like, I love that about Quentin. He said the way he writes a film is he first writes it out as a story. And if he's content with it as a story that never becomes a movie and he's just happy that the story is as good as he wanted, mm -hmm. he's fine. But this would actually, I think, be in a lot of my final list of the end of the year so far in terms of cinematography, oh, so unquestionably editing, cinematography absolutely, editing. Uh, score maybe, because this was a very unique score. Very unique score. Uh, and I thought he, he, a little reminiscent of, you know, the animal stuff in, in Jolly Taku, of like nature and how you can hear a lot of the stuff. And then there also just very unique stuff that they put behind the There was the a film. shot, and I don't know if it was a post-production thing or if they really did it in real time where he's walking the, the um, demon fighter guy, right? I'm yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. we can't call his name. But he's walking and we have him from the back and it's a shot on the ground and he's just got his left arm slightly bent as he's walking and the sun is coming straight mm -hmm. through that hole, symmetrically perfect. I mean, it is. It, I, this is a movie where if someone's a DP or studying to be a DP, that alone you'd say, or editing, you'd say just, watch this for the cinematography yeah because it is 
it is a master class yeah. in cinematography and editing. I'd say it's worth it just for that, regardless of if you ended up enjoying the overallness of it. It's what you, I don't think anybody can walk away with this not loving the cinematography. It's what propelled well. me through. Yeah. Even, I mean, think about this. Yeah. I didn't really care about anybody yeah. or what was happening, but I was enjoying watching the cinematography. Yeah. You've got to have exceptional cinematography to keep me engaged to a story I'm not really interested in and people I'm not interested in. Mm. That's how great the cinematography yeah. is. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it's it's one of those films that's obviously not everybody's cup of tea. Uh, but let us it know. It might be yours. It might be yours. And you can let us know what you thought about this film uh, down below, whether you liked it or not, uh, whether you think we're idiots, as you always do or not. Of course. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're, missing, we're, we're arrogant. Uh, never know it all. Yeah. Uh, but uh, let us know what the next Malayalam film sh we sh uh, should watch is. Because they're coming in like <laughs> yeah, a Yeah, I'm sure there'll be another one releasing next week. <laughs> so let us know down below. <laughs>